Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a Ruby on Rails single page application. So looking at this website, you can see I can create a post. I'll name the title best title and then the body best body. And then I'll create the post and it creates and updates simultaneously in real time. And then oops, but if you click the best title, then you can edit it all on the same page. So I'll change it to worst title, save. And you can do the same with the body. And then you can also destroy it all on one page. That's a single page application with Ruby on Rails. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up the Windows terminal so we can create a new Ruby on Rails application. So I'm going to go into my project where I create my Ruby on Rails applications. I've called it Rails Projects. And then we're going to do Rails New SPA. Enter. This is going to create our new Ruby on Rails application. If you are if you're on Windows, I recommend using Ubuntu as it makes it way, way faster. As you can see right now, it's just installing all the dependencies. I'm making this tutorial because I found that there wasn't really good resources, up to date resources on how to make a single page application. There was one good tutorial from GoRails, but it's about three years old at this point. So that's why I'm making this tutorial. Okay, so the application has been successfully created and now we're going to CD into it. So CD SPA. Then we're going to do code dot to open it up in Visual Studio Code. Okay, now that we've got the application, we are going to create a CRUD model. So let's go back to the terminal and let's say Rails G scaffold post. And we're going to say title text and body text. This is going to create a scaffold. If you don't know what a scaffold is, then you're not really fit for this tutorial, but basically it makes it so that you can create, read, update, and destroy a model. Then we're going to have two attributes, title and body, and they're going to be text type. So hit enter. That's going to create our scaffold. And then we have to run one more command, and that's called Rails DB Migrate. And this is going to migrate that data to the database. So hit enter. And if we look at schema, so go to db schema.rb, you can actually see this table of posts was created with two attributes, title and body. These are default. Okay, now that we've done that, we can run the Rails S server. Cool. And then we'll go to the browser and just check everything is working. So this was the previous application. Enter, go here. And as you can see, we're getting the Rails home page. Cool. From now, I'm just going to go to the blog post where I created like a week ago the instructions. That's going to make it a lot more formatted and easier. So here we have the requirements, Rails 7, Ruby 3, and decent knowledge of normal CRUD layouts in Ruby on Rails. So first create post scaffold with title and body. We've done that. Add root posts hashtag index to config slash resource.rb. We can do that now. And then we need to render the form on the index page. So add this line to the index page. I'll have a link to this notion file in the description. You'll be able to get it for free in the description. So I'm going to copy this line of code. It's uh, I'll write it out as well. But for now, let's go to back to VS code and let's go to config roots.rb and let's make it to that root post slash like index. Then we can go back to the application just to make sure that worked. And as you can see, we're getting this. Okay, and so I don't really like how this looks. So we're going to add something called simple CSS, which is going to automatically improve this stylistically. So search up simple CSS 2. And here we can see this link and scroll down. And then here it says the CDN. So we're going to copy and paste this to the application.html.erb. So let's go ahead and do that. Go to VS Code and get rid of this one. That's not default. And copy this one in. And that should fix our application. Perfect. It looks a lot better. Let me just get rid of our CDN there. So yeah, now this looks a lot better than default, I'm sure. So the first thing that we want to do is to render the form on the index page so that we can create posts just on the index page. So let's go to VS Code and let's go to the post folder and let's go to index.html.erb. And we want to have, instead of new post, we want to have this link. We want to say turbo frame tag ID new post, and we're getting this source new post path. So basically what this tag is going to do is go to the new post path, which is this file, new.html.erb. Then it's going to look for a turbo frame tag with the ID of new post. And then it's going to render all of the information in that turbo frame tag on the new page. So to make this work, we actually have to add the turbo frame tag into new to so go here. And then we'll go here 
and do we have to add an end tag then also add an end at the bottom we can also get rid of this source new post path so if we do that and refresh we're getting an error and we actually need to add this do where as well okay so go back to the index page and as you can see now we're rendering the form on the home page and I'll just show you how we did that again so on index we have this turbo frame tag id new post source new post path this looks at the turbo frame tag on the new page and then renders this turbo frame tag with all of this information inside of it so here it says render form that's why we're rendering the form on the home page cool now when we create a post now you'll notice that it says content missing and so we're going to fix that now and so let me just destroy these posts and then let's go back and let's go to post controller so go to post controller controllers post controller and in the create method we're going to replace all of it with this so it mainly stays the same other than this line format.turbo stream this line means that we're going to look at a turbo stream response. So we're going to have to create a new file in post folder called create.turbostream.html.arb and essentially that's going to be the response instead of redirecting to the post. So go to post folder and create a new file and we're going to call it create.turbostream turbo underscore stream.arb Is that right? And the reason that we called it create.turbostream.arb is because a it's a turbo stream file and two it's because it's in the create method of the post controller so that's why we created it in the post folder these are important things make sure not to forget them so after we've created this create.turbostream.arb in app views post folder then we need to add this line of code to that file so we're saying turbo stream.append posts at post so let's go to that file and add this so as you can see it says basically add any new posts to the posts div so to explain this line a little bit further if you remember in the create action in the post controller so look let's go to create action post controller we're saying at post is equal to post dot new and we are creating a post and we call it at post here we call it at post because of the line at post post dot new so this line adds the post instance variable to the div now we haven't actually named this div yet so to make the experience more real time, it says in the instructions, go to index.html.arb here. And we're going to make it so that show this post. We're going to delete this line and show this post. We can comment it out. And then we're just going to refresh and see what we get. So I'm going to create a post now. And as you can see, it automatically updates. Perfect. Okay, so that's actually really good. So with just a simple few steps, we got some real time updating to the div. Now notice how the form does not reset, we're going to fix that in a second. And also there's no delete button. That's something that we'll do in a second as well. That should be the easiest thing to do. Let me just check if I'm still... Oh, oh that's the stopped recording, absolute bastard. <laughs> that's okay, I can just split the MP4 from the MP3. Anyway. So, we need to create this delete button. Great job. Now, so now we have our form on our index page, same place as the posts. And when you click create a new post, it is automatically added to the post div, all in real time. Though the form does not clear, which we will fix in a second. So clearing the form after creating a post. Assuming the turbo frame is in the form part, then this method will work. So make sure you have it set up like this. Add this code to create.turbostream.arb. Now, if you remember, we added our turbo frame to the new part. If you remember, we added it here. But this is saying that the method will only work if we have it here. So let's go ahead and add it here. So I'm going to copy it here. Copy this line of code. I'm going to delete this. Save. And then go to the form. Add it at the top. And then add an end tag at the bottom. And then I'll go back to the instructions and copy this line of code to create.turbostream.arv. Let's have a look what it's saying. It's kind of intuitive. So turbostream.replaced the new post div oops with the partial form locales post post dot new so let's go ahead and save that and refresh and see if our form resets perfect so now our form is resetting after creating the post then we have to add a delete button and we also have to make it so that you can inline edit these 
these attributes. I'll have a summary of how this all works in the description and we'll also have the instructions in the description. Just in case I'm talking too fast, make sure to get to this, get the instructions. So let's add a delete button. So let me go back to the instructions because it's difficult to remember everything here. And now we will make deleting posts real time. I'm kind of using this word wrong. To achieve this, go to show.html.db and copy this line to at the bottom of underscore post.html.db. So it's saying go to show, steal this line from this file, go to post and add it here. And then it's saying in post.html.db, change it so that it's using the post variable and not the at post variable. Okay, we can do that. So get rid of the at, save, and like this, and then it has it there. Now that you have this line in underscore post.html.erb, remove it from the show.html.erb, it is no longer needed at all. Okay, we've done that. So save that file, and then go back to the application, and they all have destroy posts button, and we can destroy them, and it updates in real time. So that's actually very, very cool. Pretty easy. If you're having any problems with this, make sure to comment and I'll help you out. So the next thing that we're going to do is make it so that you can inline edit these attributes. So to do that, this is going to be the longest part, as you can see. And what we're going to do is add turbo frames to our form and our post partial. When an element in the post partial is clicked, we will render the form for that element on the same page. When the form is submitted, we will update the element without refreshing the whole page. So in post.html.erb, the important parts we're focusing on are these lines. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this code to the bottom of this file. And we're creating a new frame and we're calling it title turbo frame. And then we're creating a form with the same frame ID. So what we're going to do is copy in this box of code and then take the body, put it at the bottom, delete the top part, then go and copy this, all of this again. And we're going to do the same thing, but for the body. So we're going to say like this, change this to body. And that's everything we have to do. So we have body turbo frame and title turbo frame with the body and a body. Cool. And then I'm actually just going to get rid of the title because we don't really need that. I'm going to change the post.title to h1. And that's good for now. I'll also get rid of this body tag. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to change something in the form the HTML.erb. And so basically what we need to do is match up the turbo frames and put them in the form.html.erb. So we can copy this box of code and we're going to go to form.html.erb and then we're going to copy it in at the bottom. So let's see, if post.persisted, render the form with the post with the title there. So we're going to display the title. So let's save that file, go back to the application. And as you can see, we have buttons for saving this. But the problem is we don't have a turbo frame tag for the body. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy, copy all of this and then do the same thing, but for body. Let's go to body and then body and body. Then I don't think we actually need a cancel button. So I'm going to delete that or I just comment it out and make sure to comment it out after the percentage sign, the first one. Edit, change this to best title ever. Change this to like this video. Save. And as you can see, that worked. Now, the next thing that I want to do is a bit of styling. And we're just going to make it so that when you actually click this, it edits instead of having to click edit title, because I think that is a little bit cooler. It might not be so functional in a production app, but I just think it makes it a lot neater. So to do that, what we're going to do, we need to go back to underscore post to html and we're going to place this above this line and we're going to place this one above this line. And what we're going to do then is say style position absolute width 100% height 100% and quotes. And then we're going to go to the form and we're going to try and say style uh, position relative. Let's just see if that syntax is correct. I think it is. And then we can get rid of edit title 
and if we go here and look like that and as you can see that works so that's pretty cool then we'll just do the same thing with the body so let's go here copy and paste the code so copy and paste the style like so and also copy and paste this position absolute and into this here save refresh so now, if I click on these attributes, they go to inline editing, and I can change this to worst title ever. And I'm actually having a problem here. I can't actually change this one, this body. So what I'm going to do is just create a div, and then add that style to this div instead of on the form. That way, they shouldn't conflict then close the div and then do the same thing down here make sure to do it after the form cool and as you can see now that little styling error is fixed okay so in this video we created our own single page application that's pretty damn cool it took, how long did it take? It took a good uh, 26 minutes. I'm recording, it'll probably be a lot less for you, probably be like 15. Oh, there's actually one problem. Our destroy button has gone. I'm just gonna go and get that destroy button back. So go back here, go back here, then change it, and then put it at the bottom, um, at the bottom of the post, and change this to post. It should come back now, cool. Okay, good. So, if you like this video, video, subscribe, like the video, check out the source code, check out the Notion, I'll have a link to the Notion in the description, and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then subscribe, more Rails content to come, and then I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.